All right, we did another truck show today. I'm starting to lose my voice, it feels like. Anyway, we did another truck show today. You can find that videos over at TWK Trucking with Kingfish. That's TWK Trucking with Kingfish over at the YouTube channel. So just go over to YouTube and type in TWK Trucking with Kingfish. A lot of car shows, truck shows. And we got the Shell Rotella Tour coming up next Friday in Hampshire, Illinois. We're definitely going to be hitting that one. That's going to be fun. I uh, went to a wedding last night. That was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. I uh, had a great time. It was in an old barn. It was really cool. I mean, they just, it was very classy. And uh, I just really enjoyed it. And it was really good people. Just surrounded by good people, which even made it just that much. Just that's what made it. You know, I was down in, uh, where was it? You know what? Like Jefferson or something. Il Wisconsin. Out in the middle of this farmland, which is really cool. Yeah, it was a pretty neat setting. It's it's probably one of the better weddings I've ever been to. The food was a little late, but other than that, big deal. You know, it's it's all about celebrating the you know the new bride and groom, and they looked fantastic, and you know both of them, and their parents were happy, and the grandparents were happy, and you know what more could you ask for? So anyway, what do we got going on this week? Next week, Friday, Shell Rotel. I think I already said that. We're going to be doing some footage there, see what happens. Then what's after that? Well, right after Shell Rotella, we got well, probably some more car shows. Car shows are easy to get to because they're all the time. Truck shows are a lot harder, so we just have to see what happens with the truck shows. I don't know when the next one's going to be after that, but that's really what I like doing. I really enjoy the car shows, but I did the truck shows. Today's car show, I went straight there from the wedding. Because we stayed overnight at a hotel, and that was, ooh, it was a long day. Now I got to get ready, and I got to take a loaner truck out this week because ours is still damaged from the from the accident. So you know, with a deer, you go to TWK once again. YouTube, you go to TWK Trucking the Kingfish. You can see the video footage of the deer truck hitting the deer. It's not gory. It's just it's a, it's a good example of what you should do. You know, keep steady. Don't swerve. Don't do anything crazy. Just go, you know, just hit it. It sucks, but that's what you got to do. You know, there's nothing else you can do. Uh, if you swerve, you could cause more damage. Maybe you'll hit somebody. You could really wreck. You could do a lot of damage. So it's best just to hit them, especially because they'll start on you. Now, little Tommy, that was his first deer. He handled it quite well. So considering that was his first deer, I was pretty happy with it. Yeah, I thought he handled it quite well. I was really impressed, especially that being his first one. I've had a lot more than one, unfortunately, and uh, it's just the way it is. So, anyway, I guess we'll get on with the news, and, oh, yeah, subscribe to TWK, Trucking with Kingfish, over on the YouTube channel. And uh, that being said, if you got any great footage, you want to put it up there, you got something interesting. You know, shoot it my way, whether it's a dash cam or you see something crazy happened or who knows. I got a dash cam in the window now, so we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll get some other stuff up. Like, I wish I would have had the dash cam up when that tornado hit and I was inside of that. That would have been cool. Or the flash flood in New Jersey. You know, all these things. Because things are going to happen. The problem is, is when they happen, you don't have time to grab your camera. You just got to, well, you're basically holding on for dear life is what the problem is. So the last thing you're thinking about is a camera. So you just deal with it. So that being said, I guess we'll get on with the show. I've been rambling long enough. Keeping that hammer down all across the nation. Checking cities off his list. Sharing stories of the road right here on his station. You are listening to the Kingfish. Yes, you've tuned in to the Kingfish Radio Network. Mm. Expand your mind. On the open road with Kingfish, right well, here. Let's start off with something serious here. A recall, of course. The feds launched an investigation and it breaks after trucks catch fire. As many as 500,000 trucks may be affected. 
So basically what it comes down to is the NHTSA, the National Highway Safety uh, Administration, launched an investigation into multiple fleets because of air brake systems, which, you know, could cause fires. So what's happening is uh, on July 16th, the NHTSA noticed the agency confirmed that an investigation has been opened and the Hal- Haldex Gold Seal GC, GC30, 30 LCW air brake chambers installed in late model uh, 2015 to 2021 trucks after complaints of air loss resulting in vehicles fire, vehicle fires. Oh, I'm just butchering this one. An estimated 500,000 trucks could be affected according to the NHTSA. The agency describes the defect. The power spring, okay, so here's what it is. The power spring fractures puncturing the diaphragm, causing air loss within the spring brake circuit, resulting in brake drag without sufficient warning to the driver. So basically what it is is the brakes are dragging just very lightly. And so that, you know, it's building up heat as you're going down a road, but you're not feeling the drag because it's so light. That happens during the winter sometimes. They'll do that. The ice will build up and push them, and it'll do that. I've seen that happen. And then the damn things will catch on fire. And it's almost impossible to put those fires out without water because they, they're they they're heat generated. They're, they're caused by heat. And, and oh, it's just a nightmare. You can hit them with the fire extinguisher, but quite on, you know, it won't do nothing. You know, and then if the tire blows, oh, yeah, yeah, don't be standing next to that sucker. Because if a tire melts and then the air starts streaming out, It'll blow right across there and it'll turn it into a damn torch. You know, you'll see this flame shoot out. So, I don't know. So, anyway, that's what's going on. Uh, if you got this uh, uh, Haldex Gold Seal GC3030 uh, LCW air brake chambers, uh, go get them checked out. You know, save yourself some trouble and uh, don't catch on fire. All right, let's get moving on. All right, here's something I just. I don't know, I just find this a little disturbing. I don't know, maybe I, should, maybe I shouldn't find it disturbing. But because 18-year-olds, you know, join the military. But anyway, an 18-year-old pilot makes an emergency landing on major New Jersey highway. Now, he just, this kid had just earned his license three months ago, okay? And he's flying one of those planes with the, you know, with the beach, with the banner going behind it. That's his job to fly the, you know, the, the you know, Comita Joes or Copper Tone or whatever the, you know, whatever it is they advertise. So on July 19th at about 12.30 p.m. near Steel Pier in Atlantic City. I'm not really familiar with Atlantic City, but I'm looking at this bridge over the water. Anyway, according to New Jersey News, 18-year-old Landon Lucas was flying the small banner plane when it began having engine trouble. Lucas reported the issue, released the banner into the ocean, so he cut the banner loose. I wonder what it said. And was attempting to, put, to make it to the Ocean City Municipal Airport when he noticed the gap in traffic on westbound Route 52. It says here, Lucas seized the gap, landed the plane on the roadway without incident, and uh, didn't damage the plane at all. So I guess he screwed up traffic, though. And they had to come out and investigate. Then they had to take the wings off. Uh, it just said here, Lucas had just earned his pilot license three months ago and declined to be interviewed, but that he was okay. You know, probably an engine trouble or something. It looks like they were pointing at the engine. I guess what I'm surprised at is, you know, I didn't think that you could, I guess, you know, he got his pilot license and he could fly and, you know, I guess that's kind of cool. I mean, it's kind of a neat, sounds like it'd be kind of a neat gig, you know, but I didn't know that uh, you could be so young and do that kind of stuff, you know, because it's commercial, you're flying, you're advertising. I'm just kind of surprised by it, but I guess it's cool. He did a good job. So I guess we'll go with that. All right, let's keep moving on. Now, here's a bizarre story. Man responsible for gas station tanker truck gas returns to the scene less than 24 hours. So here's what it is. Tanker driver was filling up the down in Oklahoma City uh, at the on queue. He was filling up the tanks, okay? So this crazy guy, you know, Ron Wade, he's the driver. Okay, that's Ronnie Wade. He's looking up the fuel lines beneath his tanker truck, right? So he's underneath the truck. And there's a Lobo, L-O-L-B-A, uh, guy, he rammed his, his, I guess it was a pickup truck. Doesn't say what it was, just his truck, so who knows what it was. He rammed his truck, pinning it underneath and covering uh, Ron Wade in gas. That's why I'm assuming it's a pickup truck, because he wedged it underneath. Wade was then able to crawl. It's the truck driver, you know, the, the semi-truck driver. 
Wade was then able to crawl out from under the tanker and make it to the corner of the building. He was later found lying on the ground by police responding to the scene. They described him as suffering from a large cut on his arm with massive swelling covered in gas and repeatedly telling officers that he was on fire, although, although he was not. Wade says he does not remember seeing, uh, seeing or hearing a vehicle prior to the incident. So probably what happened was they got hit, he got cut really bad, the gas got on a wound, he felt like it was burning, and so he thought he was on fire, you know, and he couldn't see the flames. probably what happened. You know, it messed him up pretty bad. So, but at, this is where it gets weird. Well, as if the whole thing wasn't weird. After striking the tanker truck, a Lobo, a Loba? O-L-O-B-A, a Loba, I'll say a Loba, a Loba. Allegedly circled the parking lot, targeted a gas station employee, and intentionally accelerated to hit him. The car pinned the employee's leg between the car and the post before backing up and ramming him again. A little bit then backed off, got out of his vehicle, stumbled around, looked confused before fleeing the scene on foot. And then uh, at some point, the tanker truck and a smaller car caught on fire. I don't know, maybe it was a car the guy had. So the next day, less than 24 hours, the guy showed up back at the same gas station. And they arrested his ass. So, I don't know. Maybe they did something that pissed him off. Maybe he's just, I don't know. He's got some mental issues they got to deal with. Who knows? But either way, it's pretty scary stuff. Let's get moving on. Well, I guess we should file this under, uh, it isn't that obvious, uh, department. Anyway, recent rise in an accidents and accidents attributed to people wanting to go out and go drive fast. Wow, you think? Well, and an influx in new inexperienced truckers may also have something to do with it. So basically, people have been locked up. They're bored. They want to get out. Um, they're probably hammering down in their cars, and they're getting in accidents is what the you know Department of Transportation is saying. So just, you know, just be cool, man. Don't be doing anything crazy, okay? Let's just get through 2021. 2020 was bad enough. All right, let's get moving on. Well, you know this had to happen. Uh, trucker takes legal action against CPAP manufacturer, and they're talking about Phillips. Basically, what happened was is the Phillips machine, the, the the sound deadening stuff they used in it, was determined to be toxic in their Dream Station BiPAP machine and their CPAP machines. So they recalled all those machines, and you know, they're, I'm sure they'll be back out. Uh, Phillips makes a lot of machines, so it's not like they're going anywhere. So what it really comes down to is the fact that. The driver's, you know, he's suing him. Saying, look, man, you know, I, I, had to, I can't use my CPAP machine. You're putting me out of work. You should pay for my time. Yeah, I see his point. You know, he can't do anything. They said he had to be on the machine. He can't do anything without it. So it's their screw-up, so they should pay him. But, you know, what do I know? So, I don't know. Uh, Shelton said that he purchased the Dream Station BiPAP machine in 2020 and would not have purchased this product. If he had known it was defective, contained a carcinogenic byproduct, it would be subject to a recall for containing defective materials. Yeah, I imagine he wouldn't have. I mean, who would, right? Hey, this thing's going to, you know, you're going to breathe it and it's going to kill you. You know, you want to buy it? Nah, you don't think I'm going to pass on that one. I don't think I'm going to buy that one. That's, yeah, you know, I'm going to take the one over here that doesn't, you know, put the cancer-causing shit in my lungs. That's the one I'm going to go with. So, I don't know. It should be interesting. It says here, Shelton, that's the driver, is seeking a refund or replacement with a non-defective device, cost for ongoing medical monitoring, and all other appropriate damages for all the injuries he has suffered as a result of his defective dream station device. I guess he had some heart issues and, you know, defibrillation. Or, I can't say the word, so I'm not even going to try it. Well, I did try it. I screwed it up. So, anyway, that's what's going on there. So, you got one, you know, here's the thing. If you have one of these Philips stream stations and you don't know about this, it's a major recall, so go get that shit checked out. Don't mess around, okay? And uh, get a replacement for it. So I guess that's where I'm going with this one. That's going to move it on. All right. We're back at that time of the year where the big boy is going to start running. Didn't run last year because of what was going on with COVID, but it's back on schedule. So I got the schedule here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the computer read it off. Now, the subject, the, 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 the thing is subject to change. Okay, so don't be surprised, but this is going to be the schedule for the next, uh, let's see, what is it, from August 5th all the way up to 
September 7th. I'm hoping I get to see it a few times myself. I saw it twice already. Now, keep in mind, don't get any closer than 25 feet. In fact, I highly recommend you stay a little bit farther back. And if you do get close and you get to tape it or, you know, take some shots or whatever, a lot of people go see this thing. You know, just make sure you keep, you know, you're aware of your surroundings. And also, I highly recommend you bring air protection. This is the world's largest steam engine, you know, that was ever built. And, you know, it's a tra- and it might be biggest steam engine built ever, as far as I know, but as, certainly for a train. It's the most powerful, and it is loud. Oh, my goodness, is it loud. I highly recommend you give it its space, you know, or at least wear your plugs. All right, so here's the schedule. Thursday, August 5th, Cheyenne, Wyoming to Sydney, Nebraska. Friday, August 6th, Sydney, Nebraska to North Platte, Nebraska. Saturday, August 7th, North Platte, Nebraska viewing. Sunday, August 8th. North Platte, Nebraska to Fairbury, Nebraska. Monday, August 9th, Fairbury, Nebraska to Kansas City, Missouri. Tuesday, August 10th, Kansas City, Missouri viewing. Wednesday, August 11th, Kansas City, Missouri to Parsons, Kansas. Thursday, August 12th, Parsons, Kansas to McAllister, Oklahoma. Friday, August 13th, McAllister, Oklahoma to Fort Worth, Texas. Saturday, August 14th, Fort Worth, Texas Display Day. Sunday, August 15th, Fort Worth, Texas to Hearn, Texas. Monday, August 16th, Hearn, Texas to Houston, Texas. Tuesday, August 17th, Houston, Texas Display Day. Wednesday, August 18th, Houston, Texas to Beaumont, Texas. Thursday, August 19th, Beaumont, Texas to Livonia, Louisiana. Friday, August 20th, Livonia, Louisiana to New Orleans, Louisiana. Saturday, August 21st, New Orleans, Louisiana Display Day. Sunday, August 22nd, New Orleans, Louisiana to Livonia, Louisiana. Monday, August 23rd, Livonia, Louisiana to Shreveport, Louisiana. Tuesday, August 24th, Shreveport, Louisiana Viewing. Wednesday, August 25th, Shreveport, Louisiana to Prescott, Arkansas. Thursday, August 26th, Prescott, Arkansas to North Little Rock, Arkansas. Friday, August 27th, North Little Rock, Arkansas to Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Saturday, August 28th, Poplar Bluff, Missouri to St. Louis, Missouri. Sunday, August 29th, St. Louis, Missouri Display Day. Monday, August 30th, St. Louis, Missouri to Jefferson City, Missouri. Tuesday, August 31st, Jefferson City, Missouri to Kansas City, Missouri. Wednesday, September 1st, Kansas City, Missouri viewing. Thursday, September 2nd, Kansas City, Missouri to Salina, Kansas. Friday, September 3rd, Salina, Kansas to Hayes, Kansas. Saturday, September 4th, Hayes, Kansas to Sharon Springs, Kansas. Sunday, September 5th, Sharon Springs, Kansas to Denver, Colorado. Monday, September 6th, Denver, Colorado Display Day. Tuesday, September 7th, Denver, Colorado to Cheyenne, Wyoming. Well, I think that's all we got for this week. If you get a chance, go check out the train. It's pretty exciting. Uh, For me, I'll be checking out. Ooh, we just got some more emails. Let's see if there's anything exciting here. For me, I'm going to be doing the the Shell Rotella show. I'm pretty excited about that. It should be pretty interesting. You know, it's going to be um, a huge event. You know, a lot of show trucks. Probably a lot of them I've already seen. And you know, they were over at the other one, the uh, Iowa 80. But either way, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be exciting. You know, not much else going on. But anyway, that's all I got for this week. It's been a pretty easy week. Ooh, let's put... I forgot the rocked music. Okay, I'm going to add that here. And yeah, here we go. Oh, let me turn that down a bit. All right, there you go. There's the rock music. I just added it. It wasn't in there. So that way you'll know. Uh, I'm starting to lose my voice today. Probably from being out. Oh, my God, was it hot out today? I was scorching walking around with that camera. And I did not show one of my cars today. I have a tea bucket. I didn't have that out. I just didn't have time to go grab it. Because 
I gotta wait for it to cool down before I can walk away from it because it's so hot. Pipes, straight pipes. So anyway, that's all I got. I'm just kind of rambling right now. I'm tired. I gotta go to work. I gotta do this stupid loner. It's gonna be a rough week. I'll be glad when the week's over. Hopefully things will get back to normal. You stay out of trouble. Watch out for yourselves. Remember, pay attention. You know what you're supposed to do. Just do it. All right, drivers. You know the routine. Kingfish out. Peace. Cox can help make your home smarter and your life easier. Now you can use your Contour voice remote to connect to your home life cameras so you can view them right on your TV screen using simple voice commands. That makes it easy to keep tabs on what's happening around your home right from your couch. Need to keep an eye on the kids when they're playing outside? Just say, show me my backyard camera into your Cox voice remote and watch them while you're in the house. And if you're waiting for a delivery and want to make sure it's there on time, no problem. Just say, show me driveway camera to check on it with your Home Life HD cameras on the TV screen while you go about your day. When you live in a home powered by Cox Internet, you can stay connected to what matters and let Cox take care of the rest. To learn more about all the benefits of your connected home, visit cox.com slash this is home today. Switching to GEICO is a good idea, especially when you consider everything. First off, GEICO makes it easy to switch. They have licensed agents available 24-7 online or over the phone. But if it's so easy, you might start thinking everything is easy, even big wave surfing. And it's not. It's actually quite difficult. Well, if you switch to GEICO, you could save hundreds on car insurance. And you could keep saving by bundling your motorcycle, boat, and RV, plus your home or renter's insurance. But saving money might lead you to make some questionable purchases, like a 20-foot feather boa. And do you know how hard it is to clean a 20-foot feather boa? Well, they do have an industry-leading mobile app you can use to pay your bill, file and manage a claim, or add a new driver. But when life gets a little easier, it makes you too confident. And you start calling everyone ace. And you're better than that. Well, GEICO has a 97% customer satisfaction rating and has been saving people money for 85 years. It's hard to beat that. But you're right. Switch to GEICO. It's obviously a good idea.